Okay, so we uh, just spent half an hour talking about edge loops, which is great. That's one of the most used tools uh, that you will um, put to use modeling. The other probably most popular, and if not more so popular tool, is called Extrude. Extrude is going to be the topic of most of this video, uh, as it will be referenced or evidenced by the title of it. Uh, so I'm going to start with a cube, just keep it simple. I'm going to add just a, a default cube here. And I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to hit 3 to go to face select. And I'm just going to select the top face here. So extrude is um, it's another way to add geometry. Um, and it's a very quick way to add geometry. So extrude. One other one of my favorite things about Blender is that if you want to extrude something, all you have to do is hit. So I'm going to hit E, and I get this line, and this line is telling me which direction it's going to extrude. Um, by default, it will extrude on the normal direction. Normal means which direction that polygon is facing, or if you have multiple polygons selected, the average of those polygons. But I hit E, I get this blue line, and now I move the mouse, and I have like pulled out more faces from this original face. Okay. And if it, this is very simple extrusion, most basic level, it's extruding one face in a normal direction. Um, but if we take a second to look at the result of this, this is kind of like. So the, I mean, here's the shape. Remember this shape? I'm going to undo, undo the extrusion, and. Uh, so again, I keep hitting W because I'm not in Maya anymore. If I just move this face up and add an edge loop, it's the exact same thing, but it's faster. All right? So E to extrude, and I've added more geometry. I can Alt left click on, whoops, if I go to edge mode, I can Alt left click on this middle edge, and it is in fact an edge loop. It runs all the way around. Everything is still four-sided polygons. Okay, everything, if I select the face and move, grab, you can see everything is connected. Oops. All right. I can select it, select the new face, and I can extrude that. I can select multiple faces and extrude. I can select four faces and extrude. I can select just three if I want. And extrude. Um, one thing to be wary of when you are extruding is if you want to undo an extrude with Control Z. I just hit Control Z once, and now when I move it, okay, actually, this worked out fine. Um, sometimes you have to undo twice when you extrude, otherwise you'll get double geometry. It was more of a problem in Maya, and honestly, it's been a while since I've run into that in Blender, so it might be cautioning you against something that probably won't happen. Um, but just when you're undoing extrusions, be careful so that you do actually undo. Because if you don't, or if you hit extrude uh, and then right click, that's what it is. If you extrude and right click to cancel it, you've still done the extrusion. You just canceled the movement of the new face. Okay, so now if I hit G, you can see that that extrusion is still there. So you need to undo. Right? I'll show you one more time here. If I hit E to extrude and then decide I don't want to move it up and right click, it looks like I undid the extrusion. But if I select that face and hit G to move and Z, you see that extrusion is still there. Okay, so just be, be aware of what you are doing and undoing. Um, so to further develop this idea of extrusion, I'm going to delete this object. I'm going to add a sphere again. Uh, UV sphere. Lovely. Um, you can also see that when I add a sphere, it's remembering the last settings that I chose. Uh, if you want to reset it, just right click on the field and you can reset to the default value. 
So I've got a, in this case, a default sphere. I'm going to tab into edit mode. And I'm going to select, I don't know, just one face is fine. Just something on the side, maybe here. Okay. So this is a face that is not facing, a face that isn't facing, in the X or the Y or the Z direction. It's just kind of doing its own thing, looking off into the ether. Um, I can hit ex E to extrude, and you can see that the normal direction is the direction that that polygon was facing. Okay. But I don't have to commit to that direction. I'll undo that. And now if I hit E to extrude, I can use X, Y, and Z to limit which way it's moving. So I can hit Z just to move it vertically. You can see now it's like it's got an antenna. All right, if I'm doing like a BB-8 sort of thing, maybe. Or I can E to extrude in X, and it's just going out to the side there. Or I can go E to extrude and shift Z, and now it's just going to extrude straight out with no vertical movement. Okay, same tools that apply with any other movement, rotation, or scale also apply here uh, in extruding. Uh, likewise, you can type in specific numbers. So if I want to extrude it, let's say one unit, I just hit E to extrude and one and return. And now I have extruded that out one unit. Okay, because maybe I want to do a thing where like, I extrude that out one and then I extrude this one out 0.5 and I extrude this one out 0.25. Nope, just kidding. That's what did I do? Oh, I, I didn't hit E yet. E. Uh, 0.25 okay so you can be really specific with the values and then maybe I want to go back to extrude 0.5 and then maybe I want to go extrude 1 okay and now I have this thing which I've made all by myself I've, I've just been extruding faces but you can also extrude edges and vertices the same way so if I hit 2 on the on the top number line, select an edge, I can hit E to extrude. Um, it doesn't work exactly the same way because there's not a, an edge doesn't really have a normal direction. You need a face to have a normal direction. Uh, so you can still hit X to go in the X direction or, or Y to go in that direction or shift Z if you want to do that. But it doesn't really have a normal direction. So extruding in that way it gets a little bit trickier. Uh, if you want to go in a specific direction, perhaps, um, well, this maybe gets a little bit beyond the scope, but you can either extrude towards the 3D cursor. So what you could do is hit shift. Uh, let's actually go in the side view, or front view here. Um, shift right click will place the 3D cursor. And then if you hit period on the uh, on the keyboard, not on the number pad, but on the keyboard, you can set the 3D cursor as the pivot point. And then as you extrude, uh, oh no, it doesn't go towards the, um, extrude won't automatically go there, but you can right click to cancel the motion. And then you can scale it towards the pivot point, which I know is a 15 steps of complicated that you weren't prepared for. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way that you can do it is you have these transform orientations. And what you can do is you can actually set those transform orientations to the normal of a face and then go in that direction. Um, I'm saying that on video so that you know the process, but it's not something we're really going to get into right now because um, it is a bit more advanced than I want to cover. Um, so there's a way, but it's a little bit involved. The other thing with extruding edges, you see that got a little bit weird there, um, is when you're extruding edges, let's say I just extrude this and shift Z. What I've done here is made um, non-manifold geometry, which means it's no longer just a continuous surface. We've got this additional face coming out of a face. Like it's it's a weird intersection that doesn't work very well when you get into um, 
smoothing and textures and rendering and all of that it just it causes a lot of issues so if you do want something like this shape uh, you never really want a geometry that's only one face thin you want to give it at least some thickness so what I would do instead of that is I would add an edge loop like really close and then I can select this face and extrude that face out and then I've got some additional geometry um, and it's gonna work a little bit better so uh, you can also extrude individual vertices. Uh, I would not extrude a vertex out of a full volume like this, because again, you're going to get into that non-manifold geometry area that gets super weird uh, really fast. What you could do, though, is uh, let's say I have a plane here. Oops. You could then start, I'll go to the top view here, you could start extruding out the vertex if you're like maybe tracing a shape and kind of defining that shape. Now the th thing or the, the tricky thing about doing this is that we want to keep things all quads, all four sided faces. So then you have to kind of start manually filling these things in. And again, this is getting back to a little bit more complicated than I would like to be at the moment um, as we go through this. But so there, there's there's certainly a, a time and a place to extrude edges and faces. Uh, you know, you could extrude this edge out, and now you've you've extruded out a face, and that's great. Um, just it's something to be very cautious of as we're going through this. So you can extrude edges, vertices, and faces. Um, you can also, and I'm going to delete this monstrosity that I've recently made. Uh, we'll just control L to select linked and delete. Whoops. Control L. Nope. Just kidding. Select. Control L. X. Delete. Vertices. There we go. That's all gone. All right. Back to this sphere that I'm doing things to. Uh, so that's selecting indi or extruding individual faces. You can uh, extrude multiple faces at once, as I showed on the cube, All right, just by hitting E. And you can also extrude in, by the way. Uh, you don't have to just extrude out. You can extrude in. So if you want to, um, and it comma, uh, no, not, not comma, period, and go to medium point. So I'm just going to scale that in. Um, but if you select multiple faces, you can either right click and extrude individual faces, or the key command is Alt E. But when you do that and extrude out, you can see that the faces don't stay together. Okay, And there's a time and a place for this sort of thing too, but I want to show that you have a few different options when you're extruding. If you don't want all the faces to stay together, um, you can do it that way. Uh, this is particularly useful, uh, I mean, not with a sphere, that's weird and don't want it. Uh, Shift-C, by the way, will send the 3 cursor if you need that. But if I add a cylinder, and I'm going to reset that to the default value, and I'm going to reset that to the default value, and I'm going to make that smaller, okay, then I'm going to go into face mode, and remember alt left click will select that face loop all the way around. Now if I right click and extrude individual faces and we want to go out, there we go. Now we kind of have the beginnings of a gear. So we do that and then and another new tool which I was actually about to cover next, so this dovetails in nicely. If I hit I, it's going to inset that face. Oops, too far. Way too far. There we go. We can do that and then kind of scale it out a little bit. And now we have this gear looking thing. So um, that's extrude individual faces. And then let's let's look at this new thing, this inset thing that I just casually dropped on you. So I'm gonna add a go back to a simple cube, go into edit mode, select the top face, and again, I is inset. Makes uh, makes it easy to remember. And I'm just gonna drag it in. Okay? 
And so now I have this edge flow here. Uh, you can. It's also in the right-click menu, Inset Faces right here. And so what's this? What this has done is, it's like it extruded it, but instead of moving it out, it just scaled it in. Hence the inset. Um, and this combined with an extrude can get you some pretty uh, wonderful geometry really quickly. But even without doing that, so we have the smaller face. And then what we have, if I alt click on this face, we can see now we have a face loop running in a circle around this top perimeter, which can be very helpful for a lot of different kind of forms and geometry to control edge flow. Um, so maybe like, maybe I then want to do something like this, and then I'm making like a lamp post or something or a mailbox. Um, you know, you can. So uh, that's inset. You can also inset multiple faces at once. It works the same way. Okay. And you still get that face loop around that center inset face. Um, and because you have that face loop, that means that you also have two edge loops. So you've got this outside one and then this inside one, which you can't select all at once. You have to select in parts, but like that. Um, real quick, I want to go back to extruding because I did a thing just now that uh, I haven't explicitly called out. And we can look at the base here. So I'm going to go back to face mode. And a lot of times what I like to do with extruding is I will do the extrusion but cancel the transformation. So uh, actually it might be Yeah, okay. So when I made this wider up up top here, let's zoom in here. So I've got these two outside faces, and I want to extrude both of them out an even distance. So I could select one, hit extrude, and like type the distance in, and hit return, and then just type that same distance in on the other side. But you can also select both faces, hit E to extrude, and okay, uh, you can see right now if I move it up, we get this weird effect, which means I have two faces. Um, they're called lamina faces. They're two faces that are right on top of each other, and this is a bad thing. Don't do this. Uh, but I want to move them out, and I can't just like hit S because it does more weird things. So I'm going to right click to cancel the transformation. And remember before when I said be careful about extruding because that extrusion is still there? Well, now I can select those two faces and scale them out apart from each other evenly okay so again it's, it's you can select multiple faces hit E to extrude them right click to cancel the, the motion but that extrusion is still there and then you can move them after the fact yeah, so it'll just kind of help give you a little bit more control with some of your transformations After we did the loop cuts, I told you to make a tree, and you guys did great jobs with that. But now that you have extrude, there's actually a faster way to make a tree than extruding up a cylinder and adding a bunch of loop cuts. And that is if we just add a basic cylinder, like we did before. And I'm going to set it to five vertices, and we will set the radius way down, and we're going to set the depth up. Okay, so here's that trunk of, of the, my tree again which I realized I didn't record the last one, but um, we're going to make a tree a little bit faster than we did before. Uh, if I want to do like a simple low poly tree, and for reference on the internet, I searched low poly tree and I got this image, and that's what I'm going to try to replicate. Uh, I'm going to go into face select or edit mode, select this top face, and I know this is an n-gon. Um, we're going to just ignore that for now because it doesn't matter at this point. And I'm going to go into front view, just because it's easy. Hit E to extrude. And I'm going to, instead of moving it, I'm going to right-click to cancel that. Scale it up. And move it down. 
And then I'm going to extrude it, scale it down. And we'll move it up a little bit more. And then we're going to extrude, right click to cancel the mo movement, scale it up, GZ, move it down. Extrude it again, move it up, scale it down. Extrude it again, right click to cancel that movement, scale it up, move it down. Extrude it up again scale it down. And there's my very quick, very simple tree. And again, you can go back, uh, go to edge mode, select your, whoops, select your edge loops, double tap R and get some free rotation in there and, and kind of make it weird. And there we go. Very quick, very simple, low poly tree just with extrude and scale. Um, if, if any part of that was unclear, if, if the extrude and cancel the, ex cancel the transform was unclear, just practice that of hitting E to extrude, and instead of moving it, right click, cancels the move, um, but that extrusion is still there, so you can hit G to move it, you can see that that extra geometry is still there. Okay, so get comfortable with that concept um, and, and try to, you know, get a good firm grasp on that because that's going to be a very useful tool moving forward. Okay, so that's, now that we're getting comfortable with extruding and doing some abstract stuff, let's do something a little bit more concrete. Um, and this is going to, I'm just going to delete that tree as much as I loved it. It's gone now. I'm also going to delete that light because it's in the way. All right, I'm going to hit one to go into front view. And uh, we're going to make a wine glass using extruding and possibly some additional edge loops. Um, but so this is the wine glass that we have. And we could keep this open on either another monitor or you guys are working on large monitors. You can just have it off to the side. But we're going to do something even better. And that's going to bring it actually into Blender as a reference image uh, and use it directly in Blender. And it's going to be really cool, I promise. So in Blender. We're going to hit Shift A to add, and not a mesh this time. You scroll about halfway down, and you've got image and reference. We're going to add a reference image. And here it's going to ask you, what image do you want? And so you're going to navigate, in your case, to the desktop, because that's why I told it, I, I saved it. For me, it's in this folder right here. Okay, and I'm going to click load reference image. Here it is. Uh, if you orbit your view around now, you can see that it is an image plane floating in 3D space of a wine glass. So that's good. Uh, I want to make a couple of changes here. And so in the preferences on the right side, the second from the bottom is object data properties. With our new reference image selected, I'm going to choose uh, object data properties here. And I want to set my transparency. I'm going to check Use Alpha. I'm going to bring the transparency down to something that I find agreeable. For me, it's somewhere around 0.5. Well, actually, for the internet, I'll say 0.7. OK? But you can set it whatever works best for you. I'm going to go back into my front view by hitting 1 on the number pad, and then immediately get out of it and back into it. Uh, zoom in a little bit. And to just make this process a little bit easier, I'm going to move my reference image. I'm going to GZ to move it up. So it's sitting on the uh, X axis here. You can zoom in. And it's the edges that I'm lining up. Doesn't need to be perfect. I just want to, it's, it's a reference. It's not meant to be a blueprint. Um, so it just has to be kind of close. And I'm also going to move it GX along the X axis and just try to center it up. It's nice and centered. Cool. So now I have my wine glass positioned nicely. Uh, and now we're going to actually do the process of modeling this wine glass. So I'm going to, my 3D cursor is centered. If yours isn't, Shift C will center to the 3D cursor. 
and then I'm going to hit Shift A, and we're going to start with a cylinder. Okay, I'm going to right click, uh, or I'm, I don't need to right click. Um, I don't need 32 vertices, and I don't need five. I'm going to go somewhere in between. Uh, we'll go with 12. We'll be fine. Okay, and uh, the radius. I'm going to go back into front view, and I'm going to bring the radius up so it's about the width of the base. And you can turn on um, X-ray if it helps. We're going to bring that radius up to about there, and we can bring the depth way down, something like that. Okay. You can zoom in here, make sure you get a good idea of, of what size you're going with. It doesn't have to be perfect right now, we can always adjust it later. Okay, and once I'm happy with that, I'm going to turn off X-Ray, I'm going to hit Tab, and go into Edit Mode. Uh, at this point, I need to move this up a little bit, so it's sitting on the floor, or thereabouts. Okay. And now all we have to do is a whole bunch of extrusions. Now, there's a couple things to note here. The first is that we are using an N-GON cap, right? This is just one giant face with 12 sides. It's not ideal, but for today it'll be fine. Second thing to notice is if you're in, you're in front view, you can see that there's no possible way that this is going to line up perfectly because this photo is taken with perspective and we are in an orthographic view. Uh, reference images are just that. They are reference. There will be inconsistencies between um, whether it's a hand-drawn reference or it's uh, a photographic reference. You're not going to make it line up exactly. It's just there for you to get pretty close. And then at some point, you're going to end up turning off the reference images and just going by eye what looks good. Okay, so that's the important skill to develop. But we can definitely get the base shape here with this reference image. It's going to make it look... Uh, pretty close pretty easily. Uh, the second thing to note is yes we want a smooth wine glass but what we don't want to do is extrude well I'll, I'll just demonstrate here's what we don't want to do extrude up extrude up extrude up extrude up and do all of this all the way up this is way too many edge loops this is madness don't do this at all as I keep doing it don't do that Okay, so I'm going to undo way back 15,000 steps, and almost there, okay, let me make sure that I am, yes, all right, so we need to, again, we want to just use the minimum amount of geometry that we need, so we're going to look at, on the outline of this class, what are kind of the key turning points, so I'm going to extrude it up, just kind of to the, where this stem starts, right there, and I can go into wireframe view. Uh, whoops. If that helps, you kind of follow along. So I'm going to move that up, and I'm just going to scale it down. Okay. And then we'll say, like, where the main kind of body of this, we'll scale it up, or we'll extrude it again. And we'll scale it down again. Okay. And then we'll extrude it up one more time up to about there. I'm going to go back into solid view. It's a little easier for me. Okay, we'll scale it up a little bit. Extrude it. Scale it up. And then extrude it. We'll say to like here. Actually, I'm going to go all the way up to here and scale it up. Don't worry about this. We'll fix that later. Extrude it up to the top. Scale it down. Okay. So that's the outside of it. Roughly. We're not there yet. Um, let's fix this area. So, I, I, again, I just did the rough parts. Now I want to go back and smooth this out. So this is where our loop tools come in. So Control-R or Control or Command-R. I'm going to add two edge loops. And I'm going to keep them centered. And then I'm going to scale them out until they're close. And the, the top one is pretty close. 
Maybe the bottom one I need to select individually and scale that out a little bit more. You can see right here we, we, we're still lacking a little bit of shape. So maybe I'll add one more edge loop in there. Add it, right click to keep it in the center, scale it out a little bit more. Okay. And that's, that's feeling pretty good. I don't think we really need any more geometry than that. Okay. So let's look back up at the top. So right now we have a solid wine glass shaped object, but it can't hold any wine right now or whatever else you choose to put in a wine glass. So now we need to get the that inside cavity, the actual vessel part of the wine glass. So I'm going to select this top face and I'm going to inset it first because we want to have thickness to this glass. All right, we don't want to just immediately extrude it down because then this rim is razor sharp and that's going to cut up your face a lot and that's bad. Don't do that. So I'm going to hit I to inset it so I have it a decently or appropriately sized rim. And then once I have that inset, then I can extrude it back down. Okay. And I'm going to go back into front view and hit Z to go into wireframe. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow what I did before, but keep this little thickness offset. So I'll G and Z to move it down to here and scale it out a little bit, again, keeping that offset. And all the way down, so extrude it down some more. Scale it in a little bit, keeping that offset. Extrude it down some more. Scale it in to keep the offset. One more. Scale it in to keep the offset. And we'll do one more down to where you can see the bottom of the glass and scale it in. And there we go. We're going to hit tab to go back into object mode, Z to go back to solid, and there we have it. We can also, up here in our outliner, this empty, we can actually rename this uh, glass reference. We can turn that off, and now we have a wine glass. Okay. Um, the last step that I want to show you, this is going to kind of come into play with the homework is I know this doesn't look smooth like a wine glass, but I'm telling you this has enough geometry. Uh, and that's because the next step would be to add what Blender calls a subdivision surface modifier. So we're going to go back into this modifier pane, and we'll get into this more next week. But I do want to show you this one. So add a modifier, subdivision surface. And this is a step that you should do at the end, but it's going to smooth it out a little bit. And then if you right click on the glass, uh, in object mode and shade it smooth, you're going to get a smoother looking thing. So, uh, the one thing you'll notice is you'll have some discoloration up here, and that's because it's missing some edge loops. Let me turn on optimal display too. Um, but if you add in one more edge loop up there, and probably one on the inside to match, it's going to look a lot better. Okay, see, it's nice and smooth. So that's how you can get a nice smooth shape. Um, you can adjust the levels of subdivision surface. Keep it at the default for now. If you go too far, you're going to get way too many faces in your scene. But there's a, you know, there's how you add a reference image, and then you get this nice, very pleasing shape, very quickly with just using edge loops and uh, the extrude tool.